Yeah. So we'll start the discussion. But uh, before I start uh, in a today uh, today's uh, discussion, uh, just let me recap what we have uh, discussed in yesterday session. Like in yesterday, so in uh, totally we have seen like uh, what is the curriculum which we have to follow for the next uh, two months. So what exactly uh, we wanted to do it in the upcoming uh, uh, two months. That is what we have we have seen. In a today's session, we are going to start our uh, the actual st actual uh, sessions starting from the basics, particularly. Okay, so like uh, what type of software we are using and what is the use of it and uh, uh, what type of softwares are available in the market and why we use the Oracle applications. Uh, so these uh, type of uh, stuff uh, we are going to discuss in a today's session. Particularly, it's a uh, purely based on uh, the cloud basics. Okay cloud basics so uh, we have a couple of uh, softwares are available in the market like it's like uh, we have a c and uh, c plus plus everybody knows uh, these uh, softwares we have a java and we have a dot net and we have a sales uh, sales ports and we have a hadoop do there are multiple softwares are available okay along with these softwares so there are a few more softwares are, are, are available like the oracle applications is one of the software which we have and sap is also one of the application and uh, if you go with the, <laughs> the people soft is also one of the application and uh, tally is the application tally is the one of the software which we have in the current market and uh, uh, the, the other one is uh, JD Edwards. Okay, so like this, uh, we have the <laughs> sorry, we have the couple of uh, uh, softwares which are available in the market. And uh, my question is, uh, which software I have to go and I have to learn uh, to settle in my career, etc. And uh, whatever the software, so we could see which I have highlighted here. These are softwares I am going to call it as a non ERP softwares, non ERP softwares. I'll tell you the reason. Okay, why I can call these softwares as a non ERP softwares and what is meant by the ERP, etc., etc. Okay, so these are the non ERP softwares. Okay, what about the below ones? And these are softwares I am going to call as a ERP softwares. So then I'll tell you the difference uh, between. The ERP software and the non ERP softwares. Okay. So these are all the couple of softwares are available in the market. Not only exactly these are the softwares are available, there are many more softwares are available. And for example, we have considered these are the non ERP softwares and these are the ERP softwares. And I'll tell you the reason. Uh, what is meant by the ERP here? what is meant by the ERP and what is the what exactly is the usage of the ERP software here okay so ERP which is nothing but uh, which stands for uh, enterprise enterprise resource uh, planning enterprise resource uh, planning here uh, enterprise uh, nothing but uh, sometimes uh, which I used to call enterprise are a company or uh, sometimes uh, which I used to call enterprise as an organization. Sometimes I used to call as a business. Okay, so ERP is one type of software which we use to operate our business processes, operate our uh, business processes. If I'm maintaining one business, uh, I have to do, uh, I have a uh, various uh, activities in a day-to-day -day basis. So how I'm going to operate, how, how I'm going to run these uh, business uh, specific day-to-day -day activities. Uh, so which can be possible by using any one ERP software. Okay, which ERP software is the best? That's a different story. But uh, for all the business processes uh, and only ERP softwares will help us uh, to uh, run the business activities in a day-to-day -day basis. Okay, now I'm running a business. Uh, my business is a construction. My business is a construction business. Okay. So uh, I have, uh, my, my constructions are going on in the different locations or in the different countries. 
basically my business is a construction and which is uh, there are different types of the constructions i am going to get a contracts uh, from the government like uh, the national highways uh, constructions or uh, railways uh, track constructions etc etc which are happening in the different different locations so in order to run these constructions in a day to day basis i am going to buy n number of materials or n number of materials. i am going to make the payment any question okay so if i am running a construction business particularly okay so my constructions are national highways uh, uh, national highways uh, roads uh, construction and also something like uh, the railway tracks uh, construction okay etc etc okay so this is the national highways uh, roads construction which is happening in my country india and which is happening in us country okay so that means my business is in the different countries one is in india and the other one is in the us okay in india particularly i am my constructions are the national highway constructions and in us and my constructions are the railway uh, tracks construction okay so so irrespective of the location because of my business is the construction business uh, in a day to day basis i am going to purchase uh, a number of materials okay so a number of materials it's like uh, uh cement uh, steel iron etc etc so whatever the materials uh, uh, we need uh, in our construction premises and then so i used to go and i used to buy all the materials okay otherwise i used to uh, bear the payments in the daily payments for the, all the labors and number of the labors will come to our construction premises and they, they will expect the payments in the daily basis obviously we used to spend the money on the labors as well so in our construction premises and we used to uh, we used to maintain some machineries okay we used to take these machineries uh, in a rented basis and obviously we need to make the payment uh, in hourly in hourly basis or a daily basis finally what i want to say is uh, so because of my business is a construction business in the day to day i'm going to buy a number of materials or uh, uh, i'm going to make the payments for the laborers or i'm going to make the payments for the machineries which i have taken in, which i have taken in the rented basis or something so these activities i wanted to track i am sitting in india i wanted to track all my business by sitting at uh, one room okay is it possible yes it can be possible because of uh, there are a, some erp softwares are available in the market use any one erp softwares it's uh, based on your business nature and you can use uh, erp software if you implement the erp software for your business particularly okay then you can track all the expenses at one shot okay now instead of erp software if you go with the non erp softwares non erp softwares it won't help us to operate the business erp softwares are designed particularly only for the business okay if you are maintaining a business like the manufacturing business or construction business or a retail business okay you have the businesses in the multiple countries as a owner then how you wanted to track all the expenses in the different different locations it's just because of implementing the erp software okay any erp software in the current market there are so many companies there are so many uh, vendors who has uh, given the uh, erp softwares like uh, oracle is uh, one of the company and uh, who has given the oracle applications erp software and sap is a company and who has given the sap erp software so like this uh, there are uh, multiple uh, vendors are there uh, who has given all the the multiple erp softwares okay so which software is the uh, best to my business uh, that's a different story and this is all about the erp erp is a type of the software which i can use to operate my business day to day activities okay day to day activities in the sense uh, whatever the uh, purchases you have and whatever the payments you have in a daily basis those things we are able to track with the help of uh, the erp softwares only and which cannot be possible with the help of uh, the non erp softwares like simple software java.net or uh, salesforce or uh, hadoop etc etc got it ma 
so then <clears throat> we'll jump into the the other one uh, like uh, this let me give one example here also i'm maintaining one company i'm maintaining one company as usual every company is having the different different departments different different departments the sales department and the finance department and the marketing department and uh, uh, purchasing department okay these are the uh, departments usually every company uh, will have and each department uh, uh, will do their own activities their own activities as a owner of my company i decided to implement a erp software okay then i can go for uh, some industry experts to take the suggestions from the industry experts the industry experts has uh, given the solution as of the sales department one erp software will be a based on the finance department one erp software will be uh, will be useful okay even if you implement one erp software for all the departments so that is okay implementing the different erp softwares for the different departments within the company that is also okay then i'll tell you what are the pros and cons uh, if i implement the same erp and if i implement the different erps uh, within the company for the different different uh, departments okay let us assume let us assume for the sales i'm using uh, the sap or finance we are using uh, oracle and for uh, marketing i'm using uh, uh, jd edwards Okay, then uh, for purchasing, I'm using uh, PeopleSoft, PeopleSoft. Okay, these are the ERP softwares from the different different vendors. Obviously, as a owner of this company, I need to go to the SAP and I, I used to take the license. Obviously, I need to go to the Oracle and I need to take the license uh, for the implementation of the Oracle for a finance department. Okay, similarly, so I used to go to the different vendors to take the different licenses. Okay, here in our case, I used to go and take the four licenses from the different different companies. Okay, this will be a one of the drawback. If you implement the uh, multiple ERP softwares for the multiple departments within the same company, this is one of the biggest uh, drawback of using using it. Okay, let's see disadvantages of disadvantages uh, when you go for uh, different ERPs, different uh, ERPs. The first one is uh, one of the biggest disadvantages is the licensing. Okay, so normally if I implement a single ERP for all the departments within the company, you to go and you can take only license so that will be advantage uh, when you go with a single erp okay so the other disadvantage if i go with the multiple uh, erps implementation for the multiple departments within the same company is the integration integration what is meant by the integration okay in a day-to-day -day activities uh, sometimes uh, there may be some data will exchange between the two departments some paperwork has to be done in the sales department and once a paperwork has been done in the sales department that has to be transferred to the finance department for the approval once the approval is done then the actual project will be in a picture so this type of data will be exchanging between the two departments okay so if you are really implementing the multiple erps uh, for these uh, departments different departments uh, exchanging the data between the two departments is also very very difficult so that is what i'm going to call as an integrations integrations between the two departments within the same company is also very tough that is what uh, i wanted to convey here one is the licensing part and the other one is the the integration part will be a very very difficult when you go with the different erps okay instead uh, when i go with the, the single erp i mean to say the advantages uh, advantages uh, when you go for uh, the single erp the single erp which may be a uh, oracle applications or sap or people software whatever it is okay or whatever it is it all depends on the company decision which one which erp software i have to implement for my business 
Okay. So the same, whatever we have discussed here, the licensing and the integration. Okay. Here, these two are the disadvantages when you go with the di different ERPs. The same thing I'm going to call as an advantage is when I go with the single ERP. If I implement the single ERP for all the departments, what happens? The integration also, it becomes very easy. Integration between the two departments, like uh, exchanging the data between uh, two departments is also very, very easy. Okay. Now, this is what I wanted to convey here. And uh, particularly, just let me give some brief, uh, the history of uh, the Oracle applications now. Okay. When I was in my academics, uh, I could see the Oracle version as uh, Oracle uh, 8i. Okay. Somebody, uh, <clears throat> so here uh, somebody is uh, having some uh, CSE background and somebody is having some CSE background here. And uh, the guys who have a uh, non-CSE background, uh, non background uh, so they can able to know like Oracle is a one uh, uh, company. Okay, Oracle is a one company. If you are really a CSE background student, uh, either in a BTEC or a MTEC, then you should know like it is a one database of software. One database of software. You know like it is a Oracle company and the Oracle company has given the software called a Oracle database. Okay, here the Oracle database version is Oracle 8i. Okay, that I could uh, see when I was in my academics. Okay, later, uh, or after Oracle 8i, the Oracle is came up with uh, another version 9i. Okay, later in 9i, there are some certain features are uh, added uh, by the Oracle, which are not available in 8i. So later, after 9i, the Oracle is came up with the uh, Oracle uh, 10G. Okay. In 10G also, there are certain uh, few more features are added by the Oracle company. Okay. In each and every version, uh, the Oracle will add the few more functionalities and not the functionalities, few more features and they will release the new version. Okay. Here, my question is, uh, what is an Oracle and uh, how to, what is the purpose of an Oracle? And uh, nowadays, uh, what exactly we are going to do it in the Oracle. And previously, uh, what exactly we are not going to do it in the Oracle in the Oracle software. That is what I wanted to do it. Okay. Here, if you go with uh, the Oracle software, 8i or 9i or 10g, basically these are the database softwares. Basically, these are the database softwares. Okay. So, if anybody wants to uh, learn about these either 8i or 9i or 10g, okay, so they must learn about a language uh, which is called SQL, SQL, okay, which stands for uh, Structured Query Language structured query language okay so what is the purpose of oracle database software how the database will be okay so the purpose of the database software is uh, to store the data in the form of uh, rows and columns to store the data uh, in a table in the form of a rows and uh, columns Okay, even if you go for the 8i or 9i or 10g, and we can able to store uh, our data in the form of a rows and a columns uh, specific to a table. Behind the screen, there are uh, so many tables are available in the Oracle uh, software, database software. Okay, there are uh, so many SQL statements are available to store the data, to retrieve the data, etc., etc. Okay, so finally, ultimately, what I wanted to convey is the Oracle uh, is the software which I wanted to use to store the business data, right? Okay, how, how can we store the business data in the form of a rows and the columns behind the screen? Okay, so if it is 8i or 9i or 10g, okay, even uh, there is a only one place to store the data, it is only the back end. There is no question of the front end. Okay, now let us assume I wanted to maintain... Uh, I'm running a business. It's something like uh, the construction business I'm running. Okay, it's very small business. It's very, let us assume it's like a very small business. Okay, now I decided to implement uh, the Oracle. I want, I decided to keep my business data. I decided to keep my day-to-day -day business activities within the Oracle uh, software, within the Oracle software. Okay, immediately I have to recruit uh, 
one person who knows about SQL language, who knows about SQL language. Okay, the person who knows the SQL language, they can able to write the SQL queries to store your business data in the uh, business data in the database uh, software. That means the coding knowledge is required in whenever you want to work with Oracle 8i or 9i or 10g. Okay. So unnecessarily you wanted to make you, you unnecessarily you bear uh, uh, some money on recruiting the persons, right? You are going to give the salary for the employee who is going to write the SQL queries to store the to store your business data into the uh, Oracle software. Okay. So this is what it is happening in the 8i or 9i or 10g. Okay. After 10g, the Oracle is uh, came up with uh, one more release, uh, which is uh, Oracle uh, Oracle 11i. Oracle 11i. Okay. So starting from the Oracle 11i, the Oracle has uh, came up with the applications concept. Oracle has uh, came up with the applications concept. Till Oracle 10G, we had only backend. Uh, we had only backend where we can store the data. Okay, starting from 11i, we can see the front end and also the back end. That means, so if you go for the front end, the person who doesn't know the coding language, still they can able to store the data in the database in the form of rows and the columns. Got it, my question? Got it, ma? So, if you go with the Oracle 11i, starting from the Oracle 11i, okay, after Oracle 11i also, the Oracle came up with a few more features, a uh, few more releases, and that also I'll discuss, okay. So, in Oracle 11i, the maximum uh, we can see, the maximum we can see, the forms are 80%, uh, forms are 80%. That means, uh, normally, if you think logically, how you can create a Gmail account, if you go to if you open the browser and if you type gmail.com and if you create if you click on the create account and uh, the google will uh, display one page where you can write the uh, the what is your first name last name date of birth what is your mobile number what is your tracking id this information we can provide and uh, we can click on okay or uh, create account okay if you click on the after you provided the information here in the google page in the creation of the account and if you click on the okay what happens whatever the data you have provided that data will be placed in the database which is maintaining by the google software which is maintaining by the google company the same thing will be applicable here also the oracle 8 I, oracle 11i so in the front end, we have to enter the data and we have to save the data. And that data will get a place in the back end in the form of your rows and the columns. That is what it is happening. In the front end, we can see the forms. In the front end, we can see the forms. And also we can see some web pages. I'll show you how uh, how the form will be. And if, if I go to the screen, if I go here, uh, Oracle application, Oracle, Oracle application, so Java pages. Let me see here. Let me see here. See, this type of a forms is introduced by the Oracle starting from the Oracle 11i version. So before 11i, we could see 8i, 9i and 10g, but we could not see these types of uh, forms. And this is a form where you can enter the data in the front end, where you can enter the data in the front end. If you enter the data in the front end and if you save it automatically, your data will get a place in the back end. I mean to say your data will get a place in the table in the form of a rows and columns. Okay. Now, so here these types of forms, so we can see as an 80% of the forms are available in the 11i and 20% uh, of the uh, page pages are available 20 percent of the pages are available i mean to say the web pages so whatever we are going to access within the browser that i may call as a uh, web page okay if i go with the oracle 11i and i can see 80 percent of the forms and the 20 percent of the web pages are available okay and later after 11i the Oracle is uh, came up with another version, which is uh, release 12. 
release tool okay here also the maximum uh, 80% of the forms and the 20% of the pages are available and only the difference between the 11i and r12 is so there are certain features which are not available in the 11i those features are available in the r12 if it is a new version obviously we may expect the new features okay only that is only the difference here okay then after r12 the oracle is uh, came up with uh, uh, one more feature one more uh, release which is called as the fusion and uh, which we wanted to learn in our two months of our course this is all uh, it's all together it's like a background of the history of uh, oracle Okay, starting with the uh, 8i, later it came up with the 9i and the 10g and the till 10g, we don't have any front-end option and uh, starting from 11i, we have the uh, front-end option and uh, in 11i and R12, in a fusion, in a fusion. Okay, here we don't have any forms concept. Here we don't have any forms concept. Okay, everything is... Uh, web page only here everything is a web page that means we are going to access the system in the browser whatever you are accessing in the browser that we may call as a web page that we may call as a web page okay so this is the latest version of the oracle which we are going to learn in upcoming sessions as well okay now uh this is a basically this is a cloud application and uh, we have the on-premise environment as well we have the on-premise environment as well okay now if you consider uh, some of the uh the erp softwares if you consider some of the erp softwares like uh, list of erp softwares okay there are so many vendors in the market who has uh, given the um the erp softwares okay the first one is the oracle and the second one is the jd uh, jd edwards and the third one is the third one is the people soft and the fourth one is the Siebel, and the fifth one is the primavera and the sixth one is the hyperion okay so these are the vendors Okay, each vendor has given a multiple ERP softwares, but each vendor is a specialized in one particular area, not in all the areas. We have the financials, we have the SCM, and we have the PPM, and we have the HCM. There are many modules are available. Okay, almost all the vendors has given all the modules. Okay, but uh, uh, Oracle is a specialized in one area. And JD Edwards is a specialized in one area. Okay. But PeopleSoft is a specialized in one area. Okay. So similarly, each vendor is a specialized in uh, one certain area. That means each uh, uh, each vendor is a specialized in one particular module. Okay. Let's see. And uh, <clears throat> Oracle is uh, very famous. Um, Oracle is a uh, very famous for one of the module okay which is the financials which is the financials okay even uh, if you go for sap if you go for sap the financials modules are given by sap also but nobody will prefer because of uh, for the financials oracle will be a better option that uh, everybody knows in the industry as a owner of a company, if I wanted to implement the ERP softwares, I need to go to the, some industry experts and I can take the feedback. This is what my business is and uh, uh, which software is, which ERP software is best for my uh, business. That is how I can get the inputs from the industry experts and uh, accordingly I'll go and I'll take the license from the respective vendor and I'll uh, implement the applications. Okay, that will go in a smooth manner. Okay, so, so Oracle is a very famous Oracle company is very famous uh, for the financials module. Similarly, uh, PeopleSoft, uh, PeopleSoft, uh, the JD Edwards, JD Edwards, which is very famous in the other modules like uh, purchasing or uh, procurement, and the PeopleSoft is uh, very famous in the HCM. Nothing but uh, the human capital management human capital management and the Siebel is uh, famous for uh, CRM. Uh, CRM is also one of the ERP software which is given by the Siebel 
and the prime primary is famous for the ppm in the lower versions uh, which we used to call ppm as a projects projects and hyperion is a very famous uh, hyperion is a very famous for uh, the reporting hyperion is a very famous for the reporting and almost sap has uh, given all the uh, uh, ERP models, but in uh, it's based on the industry. Certain uh, the ERP models will help us. Okay, so if you consider these, if you consider these are the vendors, and these vendors are specialized in these areas. In these areas, okay. Oracle is thinking like uh, I am only famous only for the financials, and why don't I famous for all the ERP softwares? This is what the question. Uh, from the Oracle side experts. Okay, that's the reason the Oracle management has decided to implement one particular software and which is going to become as a famous for all the ERP softwares, all the ERP softwares. That means for all this. As per our discussion, every vendor is specialized in one particular area, in one particular module. Okay, so. So after seeing this, the Oracle is decided to implement one more software and which will be famous for all the ERP softwares. That is what the decision is taken by the Oracle company. Okay. So based on that, Oracle has implemented this fusion application. Based on that, so the Oracle has implemented this fusion software. Okay. So behind the screen, what they did is the Oracle has collected the best futures. Oracle has collected the best features from the different different vendors uh, specific to the each module. Okay, like uh, the Oracle is thinking like Oracle is very famous for the financials. That means in the financials, there are a, whatever the best features are there. The Oracle will consider the best features of the financials model from the Oracle vendor only. Anyhow, the Oracle, the financials is belongs to Oracle company only. So no, uh, they, they don't, uh, they don't be worry about it. Okay, now for purchasing or procurement, even though the Oracle has given the SCM models, but they are not famous for the procurement or purchasing models. I mean to say the SCM models. Okay, when it comes to the procurement, JD AdWords will be a better option. That means whatever the functionalities we have in the Oracle application specific to the SCM, so they are not that much famous. Okay, then whatever the functionalities are available as part of the procurement, which is which has given by the JD Edwards, those functionalities are very famous in the market. So the Oracle has considered the best features from all these vendors specific to these models. And finally, they have collected all the best features of these models specific to these vendors. And finally, they kept all the best features from the different different modules and they kept under one umbrella, the umbrella name I used to call as a fusion. Now the fusion is going to become, now the fusion is the best option for implementing the financials, purchasing or procurement, human capital management, CRM, PPM, reporting, et cetera, et cetera. The Oracle projects module, which is given by the Oracle projects module, which is given by the Oracle itself, but they are not that much famous, okay? So the Oracle is, uh, the Primavera is a very famous in the project specific data. That's why the Oracle has collected all the best features of the project's model from the Primavera and they have incorporated under an umbrella, which I used to call as a fusion, which I used to call as a fusion. Okay. So this fusion, it can be, it can be in the two different environments. Fusion, it can be in the two different environments. Okay. The first one is uh, the cloud environment. And the second one is uh, on-premise, on-premise, uh, on-premise uh, environment. Okay, what is the difference between this uh, cloud environment and on-premise environment? Uh, that is what we are going to talk about uh, now. Okay, first of all, we'll consider the on-premise environment. Okay on premise uh, environment okay i'll tell you what are the drawbacks or what are the advantages and what are the disadvantages when i go with the on premise environment and when i go with the cloud environment okay that is what uh, we are going to see now okay so on premise environment the first of all we'll consider the advantages and the disadvantages of 
the on-premise environment. Okay. So, according to our discussion, Oracle 11i and Oracle uh, Release 12. So, these are two softwares or comes under the on-premise environment. I'll tell you the reason why we can why I can say these are two uh, releases as on-premise environment. Okay. Now, come down here. And first of all, I wanted to discuss about the disadvantages when I go with the on-premise environment. Disadvantages. Okay. The first disadvantages uh, I wanted to talk about, uh, so which is... Uh, Whenever we, we are, whenever we we are going to work with an Oracle application, so I used to connect with a server machine. I used to connect with a server machine. That means uh, I have to go to the respective vendor and I have to take a license. Guys, just give me one minute. Yeah, sorry guys, we'll continue the session now. So whenever we work on uh, the Oracle applications, okay, so I used to connect with uh, uh, the server, which is maintaining by uh, the Oracle. And uh, accordingly, I have to open the Oracle applications and I have to work on the Oracle applications. Okay, this is what uh, I can do. Okay, I used to go to the the oracle and i can get the license the license uh, after you took the license and uh, you have to install the oracle software in the server machine and the, and you can connect to the server machine and you can start uh, working on the oracle applications okay here what i wanted to say is if i go with on premise environment uh, uh, after you take a license you have to install the license in our server machine before to that i wanted to buy a server machine so for buying the server machine, uh, unnecessarily, I'm going to spend uh, 1 lakh rupee or 2 lakhs rupees or 3 lakhs. Sometimes it may be a 10 lakhs also. So you are investing something, you are investing some amount to, to buy a server machine, right? Or you are investing some amount to get the license from the Oracle, okay? Investing the money on the servers to buy a server or getting the license, uh, from the Oracle application. So this will be one of the disadvantage of uh, the on-premise environment. Okay, I'll tell you the reason. When I started discussing about uh, the advantages and the disadvantages of the, the cloud environment, uh, then the reason will come into a picture. Why I can say the invest investment for the servers and the licensing is a, a disadvantage uh, if you go with the on-premise environment. Okay, so the investment investment for server and uh, license okay this will be a one drawback and uh, i'll give you an option to ask a questions uh, at the end of the session okay don't worry so this will be a one of the disadvantage and the, when it comes to the second one when it comes to the second one so in a day-to-day -day basis uh, the oracle is going to give a new releases okay so according to our discussion here, the first version is 8i, later the Oracle came up with the 9i, 10g, and after 11i, and later it came up with the R12, and the latest one is a Fusion. Within the Fusion only, yearly, the Oracle is going to give us uh, four different uh, versions, four different versions. So quarterly, they will release uh, one new version, every quarter. In the first quarter, they will release uh, one version. In the second quarter, they will release a a new version in the third quarter and the fourth quarter they will release a new new versions okay so now right now we are using one environment okay but oracle has released a new version okay then who will be taking care of upgrading uh lower upgrading your system from lower version to the upper version who will be upgrading this uh, uh your system the oracle application so from the lower version to the upper version Okay, so this will be also one of the disadvantage uh, when you go with the on-premise environment. Okay, on-premise environment means the server physically which we are maintaining at our office. I'm maintaining my business at the different locations. But uh, so uh, uh, one is my head office. In the head office, I used to maintain the, my server machine. 
I take the license and the license has to be uh, installed in the server machine and uh, who are the employees so working from working for uh, my office and they can able to connect it to the server machine and they can start working on the Oracle applications uh, for day-to-day uh, -day business activities day-to-day -day business activities okay now that's where I can call uh, as an on-premise environment okay here we are deviating something uh, the taking care of upgrades that means taking care of uh, the new releases okay so here i will write something taking care of uh, upgrades from uh, our end that means uh, the server will exist physically at our office okay darkly has given a new release then who will be updating the new release in our uh, server machine which is located physically at our office machine we have the separate team we have the separate team which we call as a dba team and the dba team will take care of upgrading our system from the lower version to the upper version that means uh, if you hire a dba team unnecessarily you are going to make the salaries right for the dba team this will be a headache for you this will be a headache for you okay so yearly four releases four new versions will come and every time the dba person will have to upgrade your system from lower version to the upper version unnecessarily you have to uh, bear some money on the dba resources okay this will be a one disadvantage and i'll tell you the this i'll tell you the reason behind this okay so taking care of upgrades from our end because of we are maintaining the server machine at uh, our office okay so so if there are uh, any new uh, releases uh, new releases from uh, oracle side okay this will be one of the disadvantage and when when it goes to the third one when it goes to the third one sometimes uh, uh, we are using the product we are using the oracle applications uh, given by the oracle company okay as per the standard functionality uh, the system will work as per the standard functionality sometimes uh, the oracle functionality so may not work as per the standard functionality may not behaving properly in that case what should we do and definitely we should be in a position to work with the oracle team to get it rectified to get it uh, rectified okay so sometimes uh, if your uh, oracle functionalities are not uh, uh, working properly and uh, we will be in a position to touch base with oracle team and the oracle team will give us the solutions in the form of a patchings or in the form of a data fixes etc etc here my question is uh, once the oracle has given the patches or data fixes then uh, who will be taking care of these data fixes or patches uh, in our uh, uh, server machine then again uh, the dba persons will be in a picture to apply the data fixes or uh, the patching in the server machine if you apply these are patching or fixes at the server machine then which will be applicable for uh, the, uh, which will be applicable for all the uh, which will be applicable for the system then whoever is using that particular system okay so this is also one of the disadvantage okay from our team only so the dba persons will taking care of these are patching or data fixes okay <laughs> like uh, patching and uh, data fixes data fix data fixes is uh, handled by our own team in our office this will be a disadvantage whatever uh, whatever the disadvantages uh, i am highlighting here those are going to become as an advantages of uh, the cloud environment no need to invest uh, uh, money on the servers no need to take a license okay no need to taking care of the upgrades and no need to apply the patching or data fixes in the server machine okay i'll tell you the reason behind this okay and uh, the fourth one is uh, the customizations and the maintenance which is very very costly which is very very costly licensing cost is also very high when you go with the on-premise environment because of it the maintenance also it's going to become as very very costly the customizations customization is nothing but uh, what exactly is the meaning of the customization uh, at the time of releasing uh, at the time of releasing a new feature the oracle has given certain uh, new features new features 
but the client is not satisfied with the Oracle standard functionalities, but the client is expecting, uh, expecting to build a new feature which has to be incorporated in Oracle applications. That is what I'm going to call as a customization. That means other than the standard functionality, I have to build my own future for the sake of customer. Customer is not satisfying with Oracle standard functionalities. Obviously, we used to take the requirement from the customer and we should be in a position to build a new feature based on the customer requirement with the help of the technical guys. That's the reason I can say the customizations and maintenance are very costly if you go with the on-premise <laughs> environment. Okay, sometimes uh, the project is implemented in the on-premise environment. Okay, once implementation is done and we should be in a position to support. Okay, the annual support cost is also very high compared to the cloud applications. Okay, annual uh, support cost is also high by comparing with the uh, by comparing with uh, the cloud uh, applications. This is also one of the disadvantage of uh, the on-premise environment. Okay, and the fifth one and the sixth one is uh, the client or the customer is going to access, the client is going to access their own network and the security. Okay, if you are decided to implement the project in the on-premise environment, you need to go and hire a network team separately and you need to go and hire the security team separately and you need to go and hire the DBA team separately, etc. Unnecessarily, we are uh, uh, investing something on these employees, networking team or security team or DBA team. If you go with on-premise environment, end of the day, we are going to give the salaries for these uh, teams, right? The network team, security team and DBA team. Okay, so this will be a, uh, this will also a, comes under the disadvantage when I go with the on-premise environment, on-premise uh, environment. So these are all the couple of uh, the disadvantages. Okay, now let's uh, see about uh, the advantages particularly. Okay, what advantages we have when I go with the, the on-premise environment? Only the two advantages I can see when I go with on-premise environment. Uh, the one is uh, the customizations, customizations, okay. I told you the customizations and the maintenance is very costly and that will be a disadvantage. Now, again, I can say customizations is an advantage of the on-premise environment, okay. Because uh, if I go with the cloud environment, uh, so there is no option to build a new feature, okay. Whatever the features are given by the Oracle, uh, I can use only the standard functionalities in the cloud applications, Okay, I cannot build any new uh, features. I mean to say the customizations based on the customer requirement. Okay, building the new features is comes under the advantage when you work with the on-premise environment. Okay, instead of the customizations, I can write here, building a new features, that is customizations. Okay, it can be possible when you go with the on-premise environment, on-premise environment. And the second thing is the security. Security is purely in our control because of uh, the server will exist physically at our office. So uh, we have a separate team is available to maintain the security. The security team is going to provide an access for all the employees. Okay, security is a purely in our control. The security is not in the control of uh, Oracle's. Okay, so if it is a cloud environment, uh, the security will be uh, in the control of Oracle. Okay, I'm maintaining a business in the day to day. I have a lot of transactions uh, and every transaction, if uh, Oracle wants, they can able to see if if we really implement the cloud environment. If it is an on-premise environment, the control is purely in our hand. That's where we talk about the security. So obviously, if I'm maintaining a business for the day-to-day -day activities, that data is very sensitive, right? If I go with the on-premise environment, the security is in our control. But instead of on-premise, if I go with the cloud environment, so because of the Oracle is maintaining the server machine and the even our business data is in the control of uh, the oracles only. 
the security is somewhat is less. Okay. Now, when I go with the cloud environment and we can see what are the advantages and what are the disadvantages I can see here. Okay. The second one is the cloud environment. Cloud environment. Okay. So first we'll talk about the advantages. Advan advantages. Okay. What are the advantages? Now, <clears throat> by comparing with the disadvantages of the on-premise, then I'll be discussing about the advantages of the cloud environment. What happens if I go with the on-premise environment? Uh, so you need to go and you need to buy a license from the Oracle and you need to go and uh, buy a server machine. After you take a license, you buy a server machine to install the license uh, in the server machine. Okay, here if I go with the, uh, the cloud environment, uh, no need to take a license from the Oracle. That means uh, the cloud environment, which is not a license based, instead of, instead of a license, uh, we may go with a subscription. We may go with a subscription. Okay, now my business. For my business, there are a thousand there are a thousand employees are working. If I really implement the on-premise environment, if I take a license, the thousand people can able to work with Oracle applications. The license cost is it's a like uh, ten lakhs. Ten lakhs. Okay, everyone in the company can able to use the. Uh, Oracle applications because of we got the license uh, by spending 50 lakhs rupees with an Oracle. Now I am maintaining one uh, a small business and which I have only 10 people are working. Only 10 employees are working for my business. Okay. If I spend 50 lakhs rupees to take the license from the Oracle on the on-premise, uh, so will it be acceptable? It can be the usage is only for the 10 employees. Okay. So there is a lot of difference. If you spend a 50 lakhs, okay, then a thousand employees are using the Oracle application. So that's good. Instead of the thousand employees, uh, only if uh, 10 employees uh, can use the Oracle application. So by spending 50 lakhs, it doesn't make sense. That means, uh, so if my business is a small business and there are only 10 to 20 employees or 100 employees, then I should go to the Oracle and I should take the license in the form of a subscriptions, in the form of a subscriptions. If 10 people are working in my company, I used to take a subscriptions only for the 10 people. And each subscription, each subscription is, uh, uh, let us say, uh, let us say each subscription is uh, 1 lakh. Each subscription is a uh, 1 lakh for 10 people and I can spend only 10 lakhs. Got it the difference? This is what it is happening in the on-premise environment and it is happening in the cloud environment. Okay, the cloud environment, it's a purely based on the subscription and the on-premise environment, it's a purely based on the licensing. Once you take a license, then how many people you wanted to use the Oracle applications? Yes, you can use. But the cloud environment is a purely based on the subscriptions. Okay, so if you take a subscription, that subscription will be applicable only for one employee. But the cost is very low. But the cost is very low. Okay, so that too, uh, it's a subscription based. Okay, it's a subscription based. Okay, this is a, one of the biggest advantage uh, when you go with a cloud environment. When I go with the cloud environment. And the second thing is, it's like it's a, it's a subscription based. It's nothing but a, it's a rent based, basically. It's a rent based or subscription based. Okay. Now, when I go with the, the on premise environment, here I need to bear uh, some investment uh, to buy a server machine. To buy a server machine. When I go with the cloud application, uh, we don't need to buy a server machine because of. Uh, the Oracle will maintain the server virtually on the internet. Virtually on the internet. Okay. No need to maintain the servers so physically at our office, which is what happening at the on-premise, maintaining the server at our office physically. If you go with the cloud environment, the Oracle itself will maintain the server virtually on the 
internet. Okay. Once you take the subscription and we can able to connect with the server machine, which is located virtually on the internet and you can start working on it. Okay. So that means what I wanted to say is no need to, no need to buy a server machine. No need to buy a server machine. Okay. And the third one is, uh, what is the third one here? The patching and the data fixes, right? Okay. So because of we are maintaining the server machine physically at our location, our team will be taking care of uh, data fixes and the patching and everything is uh, done by our team. But if I go with the cloud environment, uh, the server will be in the control of Oracle. The server will be in the control of Oracle. Then obviously, then uh, whenever we get any problems with Oracle, uh, uh, functionalities and we need to touch base with the Oracle team and uh, they will provide the resolutions and they will fix the issues. They will apply the patches and they will apply the data machine because of the server is not in our hand, right? That's the reason. Okay. It is going to become as an advantage in the cloud environment. Patching. Patching our uh, data fixes. That means uh, Oracle will uh, take care of uh, complete. Oracle will take care of uh, applying. Oracle of uh, take care of uh, applying uh, patches, uh, data, data fixes, <laughs> data fixes, etc. When it comes to the other one, like the fourth one, uh, <clears throat> if I go with the on-premise environment, what happens? Here, the company is going to hide the network team separately and also the uh, security team uh, separately. And uh, the company is going to spend uh, uh, the lot of money in the form of salaries for the network team and the security team. Okay, when it comes to the cloud environment, uh, the Oracle will take care of a complete security and the network. Network. Okay, Oracle will take care of uh, complete uh, the security and uh, network okay this will be an advantage in the cloud application and this will be a disadvantage in the on-premise environment on-premise environment okay as i told you earlier uh, in a year in every year there are four quarters and each quarter oracle will release a new version oracle will release a new version if you go for the on-premise environment and uh, our own team will take care of uh, upgrading the system from the lower version to the upper version that will be a disadvantage there in the on-premise environment when it comes to the cloud uh, cloud environment uh, we are not uh, physically maintaining the server machines at our office at our locations oracle is maintaining the server machines so if any new releases are there in the upcoming then definitely the oracle is uh, will take care of applying uh, Oracle will take care of upgrading uh, our system from the lower version to the newer versions. Okay. So before upgradation from the lower version to the upper version, the Oracle team will give us the intimation, will give us the intimation. This is how the downtime activity for the upgradation of your system from the lower version to the upper version. Once we get the confirmation from the uh, Oracle, then again, we can start uh, using the system. We can start uh, uh, testing the functionalities, whatever the functionalities we are going to use. Uh, those functionalities we wanted to test after uh, our system is upgraded by the system. Okay. So here on the fifth one is uh, upgrades. Upgrades will be upgrades. Uh, upgrades will be uh, taking care by the Oracle only. Upgrades will be taken care by the Oracle only. Okay. That means uh, if Oracle uh, if Oracle uh, releases uh, any new versions, any new versions. Okay. So auto automatically our environment, our environment will be upgraded. This is what uh, the activity uh, is going to uh, done by the Oracle itself. 
Okay, so these are the couple of uh, advantages if you go with the on-premise environment. Okay, you come down and uh, we'll be discussing about uh, the disadvantages particularly. Okay, disadvantages of uh, the cloud environment. Disadvantages. Okay, the first disadvantage is uh, there is no question of uh, building any customizations. That means there is no question of... Uh, uh, building new features based on the customer requirements. Whatever the standard functionalities are given by the Oracle as part of the cloud environment, uh, as it is, uh, we can able to use those If there is any requirement to, to build a new feature based on the client uh, requirement, obviously the cloud environment will not support us. The cloud environment will not support us to build any new features like the customizations. This will be a drawback in the uh, cloud environment, okay? Building new features, I mean to say the customi customizations, customizations. And the second thing is the security security because of uh, the Oracle is maintaining the server virtually on the internet our business data is entirely is available in Oracle's control we don't have any security on business data right I am the owner of my business uh, okay I wanted to provide the security if I use this uh, cloud environment uh, there is no security for my business data day to day I have a lot of transactions to enter in the system and every transaction Oracle can see because of the Oracle is maintaining the server. If you are maintaining the server at our office, then our data will be in our control. But in this case, in the cloud environment, we don't have any control on the business data, business day-to-day -day activities like uh, business day-to-day -day transactions, business day-to-day -day transactions. This is how the different uh, advantages and the disadvantages of uh, on-premise environment and the cloud environment okay at a very high level we have a three different types of the models okay three different uh, types of uh, models okay in the cl um, the first one is uh, shas and the second one is uh, pass and third one is the ias okay what it stands for Okay, so SaaS stands for uh, software, uh, software as a service and PaaS it stands for uh, uh, platform as a platform as a service. IaaS stands for uh, infrastructure as a infrastructure as a service. The best example for the SaaS environment is the cloud environment the cloud environment the cloud environment the best example for the pass environment is uh, the pass uh, is uh, the on-premise uh, environment on-premise environment okay the third one is uh, talking about the storage okay we don't need to take uh, any subscriptions or licenses for uh, ias model uh, to use uh, for our business etc etc it's a purely talking about a uh, storage Throughout these three models, and we'll be able to talk about the first two only, software as a service and the platform as a service. Okay. It's nothing but a storage. It's nothing but a storage. See here, here in the, in the very beginning, I have discussed about these versions. Okay. Oracle 11i and R2. Okay. These two are comes under the on-premise. That means the pass model. That means the pass model. Oracle 11i and R12 comes under the on-premise environment. Indirectly, I can say R12 and the 11i comes under the pass. Here we are maintaining the servers physically at our locations. So everybody can connect to the server and they can able to start working with Oracle applications. Okay. Now, if I go with the if I go with the latest version like the fusion. Fusion. It can be in the two different environments. Okay. One is the cloud environment. I mean to say the SaaS and the other one is the on-premise environment and uh, which is uh, PaaS. The customer uh, 
who wants to implement uh, all the new features like uh, the customizations, they may go with a pass model, like on-premise environment in the Fusion application. And the, the, the business, they wanted to use uh, only the standard functionalities of the Oracle applications, and they may go with uh, the cloud environment, uh, which is uh, the SaaS model, which is uh, the SaaS model, okay? Uh, any questions from anybody? Uh, yeah, hi, uh, Mithul here. Uh, yeah. Yes, uh, one question. Uh, uh, like, can you tell what is I IaaS storage? Means like uh, kind, server kind of storage? Yes, exactly. Okay. Okay. And uh, one more thing. Uh, if, when we talked about customization. No? Uh, like, like why is it uh, i mean the application like on premise uh, environment uh, i mean customization costly uh, because uh, the latest technology will be costly uh, fair right usually yes uh, the customizations and the maintenance is very costly in non premise environment because of uh, so it's all a decision of uh, oracle right it's all decision of oracle because uh, the oracle applications is belongs to a vendor Oracle company. Okay. So mm -hmm. the designing part, uh, the way the efforts uh, uh, put by the Oracle employees, uh, the designing of an Oracle applications and implementation of the Oracle applications or product. Okay. It's all uh, depends on uh, those things. So the Oracle has uh, uh, decided uh, uh, it, it's like a costly. Okay. Okay. Uh, if you compare the, I mean, uh, the sub, uh, licensing part too. Uh, when you look at the subscription and annual uh, like support that we have got, uh, I mean, give, can you give a context like comparison, like how how costly affair it will be in ABS uh, and Fusion? If you tell specifically, the figures wise, particularly, I was not sure because in each and every company there is a sales department, right? The sales huh. department uh, uh, knows each and everything of. Uh, the licensing part of, of all the applications, not only the Oracle applications. Okay. 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 That's we don't need to worry about the licensing part. It's a headache of uh, the company or okay. customer. Okay. Still any other questions from any anybody? Then if you don't have any questions, then we'll wind up the session today and we'll meet uh, uh, the same time tomorrow and we'll start uh, the other session. Satyagar, uh, I mean, like uh, uh, regarding the timings, it's 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 becoming difficult for me to join in this particular slot. Okay. Yeah, Rishi, uh, we'll get back to you on that. We have like different concerns on same thing. Okay. Uh, okay. Our team and we'll, we'll keep in update. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's all for uh, today. Okay. We are going to wind up the session and we'll meet in a tomorrow session at the same time. Yeah. Thanks, everyone. Thanks. So, can you stop the recording? Yeah. Yeah. I'm stopping.